This is one of the coolest yet potentially scary scientific advancements I've found lately and combines biology, engineering, science fiction, and insects to create a remote control cyborg beetle. Yeah, you heard right. The cyborg insect research led by engineers at UC Berkeley is revealing secrets of the beetle biology, but also a way to control its movements. By strapping tiny computers and wireless radio onto the backs of giant flower beetles, and then recording the muscular data as the bugs fly around free, well, scientists determined that a muscle known for controlling the folding of the wings was also critical to steering. The cool part is that these researchers then use that information to improve the precision of the beetle's remote control turns by stimulating that muscle and turning it into a cyber. The possible application is to send remote control beetles that could eventually be used in search and rescue operations by entering locations too dangerous for humans. Pretty much we are creating our own biological drone snake. Pretty crazy stuff. It is crazy. And it it's is, so isn't it? I don't know, I don't even know what to really think about it, you know, it's still kind of sinking in. But it is cool, it's a good alternative to drones, I guess, they're way smaller and they're way cheaper, right? I think it costs like 10 bucks to make one of these it is, the cyborg That's a cool beetles. part of the technology, that the technology itself is yeah. it's, it's a cheap technology, but the combination with the biology no, knowledge is pretty cool, because they, they updated knowledge that, that, that came back from the 1800s, mm -hmm. from the all biology study of this beetle, that they thought that it was only a muscle that you know, flapped the wings, and now they, with this research they found that actually that same muscle helps with the steering. So they pretty much hack the muscle, and what they do is they connect six electrodes into the beetle optic lobes and into the muscles, the flight muscles, and then they, you know, uh, power this device with a small, you know, clock battery. Yeah, well. And then by remote control, wireless, completely on free flight, they can actually make the, the beetle steer to the right or to the left or up and down uh, without being in control, without being in touch with the beetle like before they had to, you know, tether the, the, the bug. But now, it's connected to it, its brain. This is it. This is the beginning. This yeah, is it. This exactly. is where it all started, guys. Before, you know, all of that, this is it. Humanoid, cyborgs, this is where it, it's, it's is, all going to come is, from this. Exactly. Because, I mean, this is literally robotic, half robotic, half organic. We are it's terrifying. Hacking, you know, and we've seen, you and know. And it's really messed up at the same time. But go ahead. It's what kind of scary. It, it's exactly, when are we getting to the point that we need some more ethical debate about these technologies? When it becomes an animal that's cute. That's when, because this, Nobody no cares one's going to care. It's awesome. And I said it's but awesome, too. What if you send something for, to surveillance? And you don't know, and they're out there just flying around, mapping, you know, well, then, yeah, that's awesome that they send. But once we get, you know, further along with technology, we won't need the, uh, the whole organic part. We will, we will be able to create this little mini bug type thing which looks like a real one, so no one's yeah. gonna be suspecting of it being a spy or something. But no, no, no this is cool. I'm all it for is. it. I think it's great, but I wanna know if the bug is in pain or if the bug it feels anything. They're, they're gonna, they probably wouldn't. Yeah, they well, it's an insect, that, so. Right? Doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter because yeah. it's not a cute <laughs> cat or, you know, a fur-making fur animal. But the point is that technology has evolved so much that we are now using multidisciplinary approaches to find out, you know, something that it's been unknown for 200 years in biology, but also that opens up a whole breadth of, of new research that we can get done through the remote control of animals for applications. So we want to know what you think. Do you think this is a cool story about tapping into technology to control other species, or we just we just got it all wrong. Let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe to the Leap TV.